What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Turn the Jets podcast. I'm your host, Will Parkinson, at WillPod11 on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. All 32 pod, TOJ Talks. You guys know the deal. Wednesday morning, late Tuesday night reaction. Uh, tried to tried to sit on this one for a little bit. Did my all 32, you know, kind of rant on the Jets and tried to, tried to take some of the emotion out of it a little bit and just kind of process exactly what went down on Sunday night. Get into it a little bit here. I'll have more, you know, kind of further in-depth detail. Uh, we'll have a special guest on the pod later this week. Uh, as well as TOJ talks to a full in-depth preview, you know, of, of Jets Patriots. Sunday night sucked. Um, I, I don't, I don't know how else to say it. I kind of, kind of cut the bullshit here. I, I, there's no reason to. There's no kind of fake fluff optimism. I'll get kind of more towards the optimistic side, I guess. You know, at the end of this one, but Sunday was really frustrating. Um, I, it was one of the more frustrating Jets losses, honestly, I can remember. It was one of the more frustrating sports days. If you're a New York. You know, sports fan. I'm a Yankees fan, so you know I'm riding. I kind of encapsulate my weekend. I drive down to to watch USC. Who you know, I grew up be a USC fan. Me and my brothers, we do this whole meetup. We you know watch USC Maryland. They're beating the dog piss out of Maryland for a majority of that game, and all of a sudden USC starts to choke because that's what they do under Lincoln Riley, and they give up you know basically 20 straight points. <clears throat> Sounds familiar, and they end up losing on a. You know, they don't get a fourth down conversion. Maryland storms the field. I drive back six hours home. Horrible. Yeah, but the good news is the Yankees advanced to the World Series. So I'm like, all right, USC lost and the Yankees won. At least, you know, at least not totally screwed, right? Like at least it's at least, you know, someone someone kind of came through and, and we kind of go from there. Biggest issue is that we go into Sunday and it's, of course, you know, Mets and Jets and uh, two kind of not elimination games. Obviously, the Mets were in elimination game. The Jets, you know, when they really got to have this one, it's not a must win, but it's pretty damn close. They start out, they look awesome. Um, maybe not the first drive, but like generally speaking, I felt like the offense first twenty ish minutes, all things considered, right? Like Rodgers and Devontae weren't one hundred percent on the same page. Devontae hasn't played football in almost a month, and you know, it's it's to be expected. The Steelers are a really good defense. I think they came out a little almost like too hyped up on, on offense. You know, it's not perfect, but you're seeing these flashes, right? And whether it's Brees looking the best he's looked all year, by far. Um, it's really explosive. Marshall Falk, like in the past game where he's making guys miss. He's taking a, a four-yard pass and taking it taking it 50. They had the most explosive play of the season on that on that Brees Hall screen pass um, or dump off. You know, Garrett's got, got involved a little bit. Devontae makes a couple people miss at times. Uh, I thought they did a good job of, you know, generally speaking, Tyron Smith wasn't wasn't great uh, again, which I'll get to in a moment. But overall, I felt like the offensive line was was doing a good job. Every single play, Morgan Moses and Tyler Conklin just chipping TJ Watt, getting him to not really be a factor in this football game. And they go 15-6. Russ looks horrible. Um, I'll get to Russ more in a second. I still think he was terrible on Sunday. But, you know, the Jets, it's 15-6. You get the, again, the long Brees Hall uh, touchdown run. You get the you know, they one of those really good drives where everyone's getting involved. They're moving the pocket. They're, um, you know, getting, you know, the outside run game going. They're getting that screen game going. You get the, the conk touchdown to go up, uh, I believe, at the time, 13-6. You know, and because there was the challenge, the Jets felt like they scored three times. I mean, Irv Charles is – I thought he was in on that. I don't, I don't know what happened there. But um, Irv Charles called a fader out for a touchdown, and it got overturned. Then I felt like Brees was in. Then they get conked the touchdown. Super happy for him. I feel like it's been forever since he got in the end zone. And they go for two and they get it. And you're like, wow, okay. Like, this is the Steelers look terrible on offense. It's really just George Pickens against Brandon Eccles. And that's really their only advantage. Uh, some of the dump off stuff, they were kind of falling for a little bit of the boot stuff. But overall, the defense was looking pretty good, you know, really banged up. I mean, and they got even more banged up as the game went on, but they, you know, really banged up, but they're looking good. The offense has scored two plus touchdowns already. They have the ball now with two minutes to go in the half. They're getting the ball to start the second half. They score here. The game's over. Um, they don't score here, but they don't turn it over. The game's still probably over, to be honest with you. I don't. I don't Justin Fields coming in in the second half. Like what? What's going on here? And you know, like this was the kind of response this Jets team needed. They're going to go in three and four, carry momentum into playing a horrible New England team, the worst team in the NFL. And, you know, then they're going to be four and four at Houston, who's really banged up and looked like, you know, CJ Stroud threw for like 80 yards on Sunday and no Nico Collins. Their offensive line can't pass protect. Reddick's coming back. Let's ride, baby. Like, let's fucking go. And instead, 
they come out. Rodgers throws his worst interception of the season by far. Um, I, I thought most of his interceptions this year, there's been some tip balls. There's been some forced stuff, some miraculous plays. This is another miraculous catch for sure. Um, but this was the dumbest decision of them all, in my opinion. I, you could argue the Van Ginkle one and this one are the two ones where you're like, what is what was that? Rodgers forces it in there in a triple coverage. Garrett, I guess, could have kept it up the seam, but that's really not – I'm not sure that's really even relevant. Brees Hall is wide open in the flat. Devontae Adams is wide open on a, on a slot fade. And um, not only do they you – know, if he gets tackled there, it's whatever. You know, it, it, Steelers go in and score right away. And you're like, all right, 15-13. Yeah, 15-13, kind of frustrating, to be honest with you, that it got to this point. But, hey. Up two points at half, our ball. Let's go in the locker room. And by all accounts, the Jets were flat and they spiraled from that interception. And that's where I think the the most biggest frustration of this game is, is why are you spiraling up two points on the road in a really hostile environment? Like you're playing well. What, what are you doing? Why are you spiraling? And that's that to me is I had some on the quarterback who we talked about a lot about yesterday in terms of my energy's got to be better. I gotta be not only, you know leading in that sense, but I got to bring better energy. I got to be better. I mean, Joe Tidman echoed it. I, some other players echoed the energy thing. I, listen, I, again, I'm not saying I'm not in that locker room. I can't tell you what's going on in terms of every single day, what what people are feeling and all this different stuff. I just don't understand how you're flat in that moment. Um, regardless, they come out and the play that, you know, the Michael Carter moment of this season from the Patriots season two years ago, which you hope is not the case. You hope this is maybe the the rock bottom that, that propels them, and I'll get to that in a minute. Russell Wilson started just saying, okay, the Jets are going to basically play man coverage, and they're not going to travel sauce with with uh, with George Pickens. So anytime the safety's not over the top, George Pickens, who's one good quality as an NFL receiver, is his creativity and spectacular catchability. Um, not only was he catching everything that hit him in the hands, he was catching stuff that was hitting Jets players and bouncing up in his hands. Um, it was that type of night. Pat Firemuth caught catch of his life. Um, you know, Najee Harris eventually started to get going as the defense kind of subtly felt like they quit there a, a little bit. I mean, again, I'm not going to say they quit because that's, you know, but the Steelers were up 15 points and still ran the ball in with 20 seconds to go. You know, Rodgers throws the ball, perfect play call, you know, the go, you know, a, a wheel route to Garrett Wilson out of the slot, you know, whole shot looks great. Garrett, it hits him in the chest. Uh, I, thought, I thought Garrett started the game off well, but for some reason, just like was pressing so so much. I felt like he kind of broke out of that the last two weeks. It was right back on uh, on Sunday night. Hits him in the chest. You know, hits him right in the chest plate of his, of his shoulder pads. Pops like a hundred feet up in the air, and is returned to the one yard line. The only guy chasing him is Devontae Adams, who saves Aaron Rodgers. You know, you know, pick six. Uh, but it, it, it's just crazy to me that you know not only if that ball gets you know, the Jets get a, you know get to be on defense there. It's probably just 16-15. We're talking about a whole different ball game, but flips the game on its head. And the Jets feel like they can't really recover. They have some moments in the second half where they put some drives together. They went forward on fourth down at, at one point where they were. I thought they were going to get points down thirty to fifteen, make this a real ball game, maybe thirty to twenty three. They get stopped. Greg Zerline is the worst kicker in the NFL right now. Unfortunately, um, had an extra point blocked. Got very lucky at a penalty. Um, had his field goal blocked, and it's you know you listen to guys like Jay Feely and. And other kickers, it's on Greg Zerline. This is like the Steelers weren't rushing; they didn't like break the Jets, you know, offensive line. Their, their, you know, their kicker, uh, their, uh, their field goal unit. It's that he just is not getting the ball off the ground. Um, he misses. Um, you know, that costs them points. The defense in the second half starts to get injury after injury, and they just totally wear down. And you know, they get blown out. And again. It, it it fucking sucks, right? It was it was a it was a rough night, I think, for everybody because of not that they lost in Pittsburgh, it's the way they lost, knowing that they had this. Like they they it all started the way they wanted to. Like Pittsburgh couldn't move the ball. They were moving the ball on a really good defense and they took Watt and Hayward out of the game and they did a lot of really good stuff. But like Rodgers wasn't good, wasn't anywhere near his best on, on Sunday night. I thought Garrett Wilson, you know, the mental errors, the false starts, things like that. Tyron Smith uh, is just uh, he's just not he's just not there right now and i don't know if it's it's cover it's fully gone if it's momentarily gone because the legs are so heavy it's this point in the season and the short you know so many games and so few days and the big travel like i don't know if it's that i don't i don't know what it is it, it you know it's getting closer to olu time you know for sure um 
you know, him and, you know, Rodgers and Devontae, there's some play, there's a ton of plays to be there. Like, it, you know, you hope this week against New England, they can convert on some of those. And I think you know, Devontae bet second game back and, and Rodgers, you know, feel a little more comfortable. Maybe, you know, we'll see kind of what we were all expecting. But listen, overall, it's a horrible loss. Um, and again, it's the way they lost. The season is not over. Uh, but, you know, this stuff kind of comes down to the, it's just a circus of the last 10 days. Sala fired, Devontae trade, Reddick back. We didn't get to talk about that. And I guess I'll talk about that more as the week goes on. You know, Mike Williams in trade rumors, Woody Johnson giving presser after presser. Um, Joe Douglas nowhere to be found. You know, we've got Kay Adams and Devontae twice a week and Rodgers on McAfee and flat comments. And there's just so much happened. And two primetime losses that, I feel like the Jets should have won both those games. I I don't think it's hyperbole to say, like, this team should comfortably be 5-2 and two right now. Comfortably. And they've not played well. And I'm talking, like, even as the way they've played, comfortably be 5-2. and two. No excuse they should have beat Denver, obviously. We've been over that. They should have beaten Buffalo. But if you lose one of Buffalo or Minnesota, like, can't really kill you for it. They should have beat Pittsburgh. Um, you know, this should be talking about, can the Jets hawk down the, the Chiefs for the one seed? And right now we're talking... They got to beat New England so they can hopefully try to beat at least two of three against Indy and Houston to go on a little bit of a run here. I think they can do it, sure. But until they start winning games, no one cares. And I think that's the sentiment that, you know, kind of leaving this pod with. And I'll extrapolate more on a little bit of the game. And, you know, uh, you know, I guess this Patriots matchup, look, the Jets should beat the Patriots handily. The Patriots are an absolute disaster. If you think the Jets are bad right now, uh, I covered it on all 32 pod. The Patriots are an absolute mess. People want their coach fired already. Uh, the entire roster seems out to be out on them. Like they, they're getting steamrolled by the the worst other worst team in the NFL and the Jaguars. The Jets play both of them. Um, you know, the remainder of the year. And look, at the end of the day, this is what it comes down to. Did the Jets have one of the easiest schedules in the NFL remaining? Absolutely. Should the Jets probably win if you going into this year, nine of these eleven games or whatever it is? Yeah, they should. Um, at a minimum. Would you do I feel like the Jets rosters significantly better than it was going into the year in terms of actual talent. Yeah, of course. Do I like, you know, do I think Jeff Ulbrich is a, a, a great football guy and can figure it out? Yeah, I have, you know, some confidence he can maybe figure it out. But all that's to say, like, until they prove it on the field consistently for 60 minutes, which they haven't done in over a month now, no one's going to be giddy and excited, right? Like, the only thing the Jets can handle control right now is honestly – Go win on Sunday by any means necessary and stem the tide, steady the waters of this season. Because if you go out there and lose, yeah, the conversations around who's actually going to be back next year and who's going to be the GM and who's the coach and, you know, what's the deal with, you know, Woody and Jaime and all these guys in the Jets organization and what their role and all these different things is. Yeah, like those are all real conversations that are going to need to be had. But for right now, go in a football game. And then take your chances on Thursday night against C.J. Stroud, who struggled against you last year, and the Texans are beat up, and the Jets will play. You know, the Jets know their system and scheme and all these different things, and their own line's a problem, as I mentioned, and Nico Collins, and, like, short week, they have to travel, all that stuff. Like, maybe you catch lighting in a bottle for these next two weeks, and then you have to play a bad Arizona team and a bad Indy team that are records are better than they actually are. There's a path to being 6-5. and five. There is. There's also a path to the Jets being, like, 3-8 and eight at the bye if they don't figure it out. And again, you can say all you want about the talent, about the schedule, about they got time. Yeah, they have time, but the time is nearly run out. And the time three weeks ago when they blew the game against Denver was no time to panic. Sure. Um, I think every fan has a right to be very frustrated, very upset, uh, again, with what kind of went down on Sunday night. Again, it's not meant to be overly negative, but I think it's needed before you kind of turn the page and try to get you know, positive about trying to go take on a New England team, win a third straight against New England, a second straight in New England. Uh, we got Bill Belichick calling out Gerard Mayo for calling the team soft and the whole nine yards. Like, it's a mess. But the Jets got to go take advantage of it on the field. Um, at the end of the day, again, it's not about uh, the hype and expectations. Reset the expectations now. It's a week-by-week -week season for the Jets for the rest of the year. Win on Sunday and then take care of business on Thursday. That's all. That's it. You know, you want that building to be excited on Thursday? Go smoke the Patriots and win back some of the, the fans that are like, show me something. Just show me something. Get Devontae involved. Get Brees Hall going again. Brees was awesome on Sunday night. He finally looked like he was starting to see it. They started to get some of the outside zone stuff moving. Morgan Moses, um, feed off of his toughness. 
feed off of guys like CJ Mosley playing through injury, Michael Carter coming back from serious injury that's fighting to be out there. Hassan Reddick's going to be out there on Sunday. Like, there's a lot of positive and fun things. But it, again, fans want to see wins, you know, and uh, Rogers got to look much better on uh, on Sunday night. He's got to, or in Sunday afternoon, he's got to kind of lock it in, um, limit the turnovers. He's He's been getting a little too ballsy with some of these throws, which again, I don't mind, but if you're going to, you know, be ballsy, like, Take some deep shots too, you know. Uh, he's just missed a couple times over the field. That and the Lazard one uh, against Minnesota, which is so uncharacteristic of Rogers. So, again, appreciate you for listening. Fifteen minutes of negativity, but we'll be back on a more positive train uh, tomorrow afternoon. Mike Giardi, my co-host on uh, All Thirty Two, covering the Patriots the last twenty-five years, will be on, um, and then we'll have a special guest on TOJ Talks later this week. Appreciate you for listening. We'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>